Good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am Manuel Castaneda, Director of Community Health at New Brunswick Tomorrow. This is part five of our vaccine week. We reached the end of our vaccine week. We've talked about different aspects of the vaccine. And today we're finally going to be discussing, you know, so for those that did get vaccinated, what does that mean? What should you or should you not do now that you've been vaccinated? And we have returning with us again, Andrew Thomas, Director of Care Transitions at Robert Wood University Hospital. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us again. You did a great job with, uh, you know, part one talking about the vaccine. So we're happy to have you here again to be able to talk now, you know, towards the end, right? You talked about the beginning, you know, in terms of what a vaccine is. And now we, we're, we're, we're happy to have you here again today to talk about, uh, you know, once you're vaccinated, what you, you know, what you should be concerned about, what you should do or not do now that you're vaccinated. Of course, joining me like always is Maria Merced, Director of Community Health at Health Promotions at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. So thank you, Mariam, for, for, for being with me during vaccine week and making this a reality so that our community is better informed about Glad to be and the here. vaccine. Thank you. Thank you. So Andrew, uh, let, let's jump into it, right? So um, let's say somebody, you know, is vaccinated or they think they're vaccinated. When are they vaccinated? I guess is the better question, right? So I know that, you know, depending on the shot, that you get or the vaccine that you get, right? Whether it's the Moderna or the Pfizer, it's a two shot, you know, series, or if, you know, if you get the J&J, &J, it's a one shot series, but is, is there, you know, what does that mean? You know, when can you say, you know, okay, fine, I'm vaccinated. Okay, so according to CDC and what we're going to do is that date today, as of today, March 22nd, because, you know, the rules and regulations change and the, you know, CDC recommendation change. As of today, March 22nd, 2021, the definition of fully vaccinated is two weeks or 14 days after your last shot. So for Pfizer, BioNTech, um, it's, um, and Moderna, it's, tw it's 14 days, two weeks after the second shot. For Johnson & Johnson, which is a one shot, it's 14 days after the only one shot that's given. So those are the definition of fully vaccinated. Even though also you should know that even with the Pfizer, BioNTech and the Moderna, the one dose gives you some kind of immunity. It's just like, I think it's like 40 or 50%, between 40 and 50%. But to be fully vaccinated is two weeks after. All right, so to be clear, so I get it in my head, right? Uh, you know, for the, for the Moderna and the Pfizer, which is a two shot, you know, series, right? Uh, you're saying that you have some partial immunity after the first shot, but you have to wait 14 days after the second shot, two weeks after the second shot, for you to find, you know, according to what the CDC is saying right now, uh, is that's when we consider ourselves fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated, correct. With the J&J &J shot, because it's a one shot, series, right? It's only one shot. You wait until 14 days after that last, after that shot. Correct. Yeah. And, 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 and just to, yeah. just to briefly correct too, with the Johnson and Johnson, BioNTech and the Moderna, it's also the partial immunity that you get is also 14 days after the first shot. Okay. I, I cannot just get the one shot today and think that I have something tomorrow, right? So it takes about two weeks for the immunity to build. I don't want to complicate it, but um, it's two weeks fully, fully vaccinated. It considered two weeks after the one shot for JNJ or two weeks after the second shot for Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. Great, thank you. That makes sense. And and can you explain? Because you know people have been hearing different things. You know what does it really mean to be fully vaccinated? Do do I have to not worry about getting it? You know, can I trans, you know, do I have to, not, you know, can I, can I now act as I used to before the, the pandemic? You know, do I have to not worry about transmitting it? Like, what does it really mean to be fully vaccinated with these vaccines? So um, fully, vaccinate, fully vaccinated means that your immune system or immune response is at a point where it can protect you against COVID, let's put it COVID, right? So that's fully vaccinated. Um, so we know that the COVID vaccine, we know two things about the COVID vaccine. One, it is effective at keeping you from getting COVID-19. We know that. So when fully vaccinated, it is very effective. It's 95%, 94%, whatever the 
are keeping you from getting the COVID vaccine. And also the second most important thing is, it is effective at keeping you from getting seriously ill, even if you get the COVID-19. So say you get fully vaccinated and for some reason you end up getting the COVID-19, it actually prevents you from getting seriously ill. And seriously ill is actually considered um, being admitted to the hospital, hospitalized in the hospital, admitted to ICU, um, being on a respiratory on event and death. Those four things are what we define as seriously ill from COVID, right? So the two things, number one, it prevents you from getting the disease, we know that. And number two, if you get a disease, it prevents you from getting one of those four things, seriously ill from the disease. So that's fully vaccinated. And, and, and can you talk a bit about transmission? Because I know some people have been hearing that you can still, is it, is it true that you could still technically transmit the disease or, or what, what do you know about that? So that's the one thing we still do not know. Um, we do not know, that's the one particular thing that we do not know. We do not know um, is how the vaccine affect the spread of COVID-19. We do not know that. So because we do not know that, CDC, federal government is encouraging everybody to still continue with our regular protections, right? The precaution that we take, especially in public places, number one, wearing a mask, number two, staying six feet from you know, other people, and number three, avoiding crowds and poorly ventilated areas. Those are the three things that they want us to continue to do until you get to heart immunity where you show that a lot of people are protected. So when I get a vaccine, I am protected. So me wearing the mask at that particular time is actually protecting the rest of the population, right? You don't want the rest of the people to get it. I don't want my friends to get it. I don't want my family to get it. So that's the reason why you, know, you actually want people. I mean, we don't know how well it prevents the spread of the disease. Yeah, I think you bring up a great point, you know, and a lot of people, you know, don't necessarily understand that, right? That, uh, and, and, and I'd like to just highlight that point that a lot of people, yes, you know, once you're fully vaccinated as, as it was defined, right? Two weeks after your last shot, um, that you yourself are protected from getting a hard case of the disease or getting the disease at all. Uh, mm -hmm. But you still can, you, they're not sure whether you carry it or not. And if you Correct. interact with somebody who isn't, vaccinated that you're you're not a threat but you're actually a threat to them right and that uh, you know if you have people that are close to you friends family and you and you interact with them then you have to be careful for their sake not so much for your sake that's correct right. that is correct but also one thing just to add to that remember the vaccines the efficacy of the vaccines how well they perform it's 94 95 percent it's not 100 percent. so you still have four or 5% chance of getting the COVID. The benefit of the vaccine is the other benefit, right? If you have the vaccine, it prevents you from getting seriously sick from that. So you can still get a vaccine, you still have four, five, six percent chance of still getting COVID. But there's a secondary, that's the second benefit, which is prevents you from getting seriously ill from that. And, and what about with the first dosage, between the first dosage and the second? What is like the percentage that you're covered? So after the first dose, remember the first dose, two weeks after is when it builds immunity, actually seven days to two weeks after. After that, you are like 40, 50% covered. So you have 50% chance of still getting, um, you know, the virus. And, you know, to explain my own situation, right? I had the I had to travel out of the United States, so I had my first dose of vaccine um, last year, um, and I had the first dose of vaccine on um, December 29th last year, and then December 31st I did a test because you need a negative result to fly. My test was negative, right? I landed in an airport in West Africa, Sierra Leone, West Africa. And I was tested at the airport on the 2nd, on the 2nd of January, which is about four or five days from the time I had my vaccine. I tested positive. So my positive test, so I either had had the virus before my vaccine, so my vaccine is not enough to protect me, right? And 
I didn't meet the incubation period. So my test was negative here. So I was in that critical phase, you know, I was like, I'm not sure what happened, but that's what happened. But then I went and during that time, maybe because I had a vaccine, my symptoms were almost nil. I didn't get seriously sick from it. A lot of people don't, but I did not get seriously sick. I had maybe sniffling. There was nothing else, no body ache, nothing at all. Then, of course, when I came back, I took my second dose of vaccine. That, that's great like to hear. I'm, I'm a little jealous because when I went through it, it was a lot more than just little sniffles. So, but I think that speaks to the importance of getting vaccinated, right? That's because correct. it lowers the chance of it being a severe, at the very least, a severe issue. Correct. You know, Andrew, now that we have you here, you know, uh, talking about, you know, what to do after you're vaccinated. So waiting the two weeks to, to really wait until you're vaccinated, the importance of still practicing preventative methods, right? Um, can you talk to us about, you know, what we've been hearing about the COVID variants, you know, the virus variants and what they are and why it's important to take that into consideration? Okay, so a um, few things I said. The one is we don't know the spread, you know, how well COVID prevents spread. The other thing we are still studying is how well it um, acts on the variants. But what a variant. So I always say living things, any living things will find a way of surviving. I don't care what happens. If you put them somewhere, they'll find a way, right? Human beings, we develop different things, you know, adaptation. So the virus, what it do is mutation. The change. You... You know, the, you, you, throw, you throw something at them, they have a mutation. So they do that. So those mutations, should they change a little bit? You know, instead of wearing a combat green, they wear a combat yellow. So, right, because now if I see, I have a scope where I can pick up, you know, the combat green color. So instead of that, so they change their color. So they do something else. So that's the variance that you get. So variance is just a mutation of the virus itself. So now, um, because we use um, for our vaccines, right? We use some proteins, we use mRNA. So now, did, did these variants cause more mutation that the vaccines cannot work against? We don't know that. But some of these mutations are, are concerning because they make the disease spread faster, right? It's easier to catch them, it's easier to spread them. Um, and then, secondly, we don't quite know, but we think some of the mutations can be more dangerous. There are three variants that we're concerned about. Now, the UK variants, they have weird, you know, B117 and then B1135, which is the South African variants, and then you have the Brazilian variants. You have multiple variants, but these are the ones that we're a big concern about, right, that we've seen in most states in the United States. So the concern still is, will the vaccine work against the variants? So far, the Pfizer and BioTech and the Moderna, so far as of today, we think, we think that they're good with the variants. So we think they're good with the variants. We don't know in the long run whether there are new mutations and stuff like that. Hence the other reason that I stress for us to get to heart immunity, right? Because the sooner you can actually get rid of the viruses themselves, they don't have a time to cause a mutation. So the more people you vaccinate, the more it stops um, the virus from actually going through a mutation, from spreading among them. So importance of that. But that's the, that is the uh, point of the variants currently. So yeah, so if I hear you correctly then, you know, so the variants are an issue, right? But to your point, it, it's something that happens naturally with any living thing, right? Viruses are living organisms. Correct. Um, and that actually it, it, it is a reason why we should all get vaccinated, right? So that we can build Correct. enough herd immunity, as you said, enough people vaccinated so that the virus can't or makes it difficult for the virus to mutate, right? To create variants. Correct. So have a chance at all. Yes, right. absolutely. So, absolutely. So, it's, so really, you're giving a reason not only to get the vaccine for oneself so that one doesn't get sick, but that the other major reason to get the vaccine is to protect your loved ones and your community, right? Because the more people that are vaccinated, the more we protect each other. Correct. Correct. So it's well, like, it's well, like leaving the, 
like leaving the, the virus to room around with no control, that's when you get a, a lot of the variations, right? Correct, correct, absolutely. That's what happens. And, uh, you know, because when it comes in, it, it's, it's trying to survive. So it's gonna try to survive. Everything that you have is the same thing. I mean, we see that with bacteria resistance, yeah. right? So antibiotic resistance, when you say somebody is, so it's the same thing, right? If I give you antibiotic and antibiotic, I tell you take it for seven to 10 days or seven days, and you take it only for four days, it did not kill all the bacteria, but the two bacteria that survive, they develop thicker skin. They develop resistance to that. So the next time you introduce that, they're stronger. They're like, no, I don't care, right? So you always say, you know, people who like boxing, you know, when you give the right punch, somebody's going down. You have to go for that. You have to really go for the knockout. If you don't do the knockout, they're going to start up again and fight. It's the same thing. So otherwise, they'll develop variants. They're going to stand up. So that knockout has to be there. You have to knock all the viruses out. Otherwise, mutation is going to continue to happen and then you have the variants. Good. Uh, I, I like that. Go for the knockout. Yep. There you go. I think I think we got our new slogan. Go for the knockout. That, that, that's best. So so Andrew, lastly, to kind of put everything into perspective, you know, for someone who's already vaccinated, which is what we're covering today, right? If I heard you correctly, even though you're protected, right, that the main thing here is to make sure that you're also protecting others, right? That it's the that we're not completely sure if you can spread it yet. Right, wow. right. So it's better to be safe than sorry, especially considering that there's still there are variants, right? There, there, there is variants that we're still not sure whether the vaccines that we have now are, are you know, protect you or they don't protect you. I would assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, that uh, the the government, that the manufacturers, you know, the people that are creating these drugs are also looking into this and the possibility of a booster shot. We've heard this too, right? That that if it doesn't work, they'll look to create a booster shot that would hopefully address the variants. Is that correct? Correct. And that's the advantage of the new technology in vaccines, right? You can actually just genetically manipulate the mRNAs or the vaccine itself, and then probably you can address those new mutations, which are just genetic changes in the viruses itself. So we expect things like that to really just, you know, as changes are happening, and then we can see and some changes in the you know in the manufacturing of the vaccines too, so we can see that um, you know most of them have been studied in the variants like JNJ was tested heavily in Brazil, so um, we know that it can handle the Brazilian variants. So we have you know things like that. But um, to answer your you know to your point, to once fully vaccinated, let's think about it because the guidelines are just out that says once you're fully vaccinated, right? You can gather indoors with fully vaccinated people without wearing masks. So if everybody's fully vaccinated, you can all be indoors, right? You can gather indoors with that. And then you can gather indoors with unvaccinated people from one other household, one other household. So if I'm here and then uh, my household is vaccinated, Mariam's household is not vaccinated, I can gather with them, okay? And, um, you know, which is really good. So we can see that. Although in Mariam's house, if she has somebody who has a serious risk of an infection, you know, risk of developing serious illness, then you don't have to, right? And then also, if you've been around somebody, especially for us working in the hospital, once we are exposed to COVID-19 usually, right? I'm around here, my, uh, you know, I'm exposed to a patient who, who has exposed me for 15 minutes and all that, I need to be on quarantine for 14 days. You no longer need that if you're vaccinated, right? So that's very helpful. So especially, in, you know, the healthcare workplace because we get exposed almost every day, right? You know, accidentally, you're going to, anyway, things happen. So because of that, we don't have to. So if you think about that, just those benefits, right? You can, you can gather together on mass. But some things have still not changed according to this, right? Same precaution. If you're out in the public, remember, we still do not know the spread. Um, we lost the screen. But if we're out in the public and you still do not, um, you know, because we're not sure how well, uh, you know, the vaccine can prevent the spread, 
you still take the same precaution. You have to wear a mask, number one. Number two, six feet apart. Avoid crowds and poorly ventilated areas, right? And then avoid medium to large crowds, public places. And then right now, there's still caution about travel, even domestic travel, right? Um, and then watch out for symptoms. So you really have to, even if you've been vaccinated, remember there's no vaccine that's 100%. So you still have to watch out for symptoms. You still have to avoid crowds. You still have to avoid poorly ventilated areas. And then when you're out, do the three same things. Wear a mask, try to stay six feet apart. I know they've been talking about changing that to three feet, but as of today, it's still six feet apart. And also avoid large crowds and poorly ventilated areas. And wash Those your hands. Three things that are going to help us all. Great, and, and, and I just put that up on the screen for people to see. So it's still very important to practice the, the preventative methods, even though you're vaccinated, right? Not just to protect yourself, but really to protect the, the, your, your loved ones uh, and the general public, because we all need to take care of each other as a community. Correct, correct. Great. Okay. And so I think, uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I think you've really answered the questions. We again, appreciate you coming on for a second time. To, to, to end out our vaccine week. Um, wanna let everybody know that uh, we are recording these so they will be available. So if you missed any, any of the days or you missed part of that, uh, you can go to Live Well We Be New Brunswick. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that the hospital for Susalu New Brunswick will also be sharing this uh, and you'll be able to, to view these videos. Uh, but something important that you mentioned, you know, I guess our disclaimer is that all of this information is current as of March, you know, the week of March, uh, what we got 22nd. 22nd, right? And yeah. so, uh, you know, things can change. But what I like to tell people is we're giving you the best information that we have today, and that this is the best course of action that we have today. And the great thing about science is that it keeps looking for the right answer, right? And this is the right answer for today. We'll continue to do this because this is our best way of fighting the back, uh, fighting the virus and, and getting hopefully back to normal very, very soon. And so uh, I'm going to say thank you very much. Thank you very much for being with us in part one and part five. And I'm going to leave it to Mariam to say goodbye. Uh, but Andrew, thank you again. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Again, I want to express my um, heartfelt thank you of you for the work that you do at the hospital with very vulnerable community, especially during COVID, and also for giving you, for giving us the time um, to uh, explain in details about this vaccine and the importance of vaccination. Thank you so much. And thank you for being with us during vaccine week and um, make sure that you get the right information from credible people like your physician. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so everybody. much, my pleasure. Thank you. For up-to-date and accurate information on COVID-19, continue to follow us on Live Well Be in New Brunswick, where we promise to provide accurate information as soon as we get it to the community. At this point, on behalf of New Brunswick Tomorrow, I'd like to thank all of our partners that, that helped put Vaccine Week together. Our partners at Healthier New Brunswick, Healthier Middlesex, all our presenters, in particular, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital and Mariam uh, Merced, who was my co-presenter, thank you very much. And all our presenters from Rutgers, the Institute of Health, Healthcare Policy and Aging Research, the NAACP, the uh, Middlesex County Office of Health Services, and a special thank you to our Community Health Ambassador, Rosabel Pastrana, who joined us as well. So thank you, everyone. Uh, and for everyone out there, we hope that you continue to stay healthy and be safe. Have a good night.